It's Dave, AKA Lil Dicky. Uh, you might know me as a professional rapper, although I'm certainly much more than that if we ever met in person. Before Little Dicky dropped hits like Freaky Friday, Pillow Talking, Professional Rapper, Saved That Money, and Ex-Boyfriend. So I think, obviously we're trying to make the best music video ever. Uh -huh. For no, no money. Before he made it on the Double XL freshman class in 2016, before collaborating with the likes of Snoop Dogg, Ty Dolla Sign, Fetty Wap, and Rich Homie Kwan, before using YouTube to build up a legion of fans called Dickheads who helped to fund the launch of his career via Kickstarter. This is so important to me. It means the world to me. If you guys could help me out, I really think it would change my life completely. And I think it would really allow me to honestly go for my dreams. North Philadelphia, born and raised in an upper middle class Jewish family, Lil Dicky was set to become just about anything other than a rapper. He was a funny kid who loved entertaining people, but grew up to become an account manager in an ad agency. While he worked away in the business world, his creative side kept coming out. Eventually, he realized that his future was gonna be in the world of entertainment. As you can tell from his music videos, he always wanted to break into comedy and acting. So he started rapping. He had no idea he would become so skilled and believed no one could take him seriously as a hip hop artist. What's going on guys, it's your boy Marlon Palmer documenting the life and career of Little Dicky prior to fame here for you on Before They're Famous. And this is an updated video. If you wanna see more rapper bios, I've got a whole hip hop playlist for you to check out. But as always, let me know who you want me to document next in the comments down below or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! David Andrew Bird was born on March 15, 1988, growing up in the Elkin Parks neighborhood of Cheltenham Township, just north of Philadelphia with a population of 36,000 people. Dave grew up in an upper middle class Jewish family, a creative kid who did well in school. When he was 14 years old, he claims to have opened for the R&B group 112 at his overnight camp and has been rapping ever since. That might sound like an outlandish story, but around this time, the group had been dropped by bad boy, so it could have happened. Plus, we found this picture of a young little dicky with the group. In his Reddit AMA video, Dave recalls an embarrassing moment from his childhood where he was watching television on his parents' bed, wearing nothing but his boxers when his mom walked in. I'll let him explain. Rather than saying, you know, the flap in your underwear is open and your penis is exposed, she decided to just simply use her hands and close the flap herself. David attended Cheltenham High School, a public high school in the Wincote neighborhood of Cheltenham. Although he loved making people laugh, any ambitions he had to be a professional performer would have to take a back seat to his more practical goal of making a good living and a safe job. I know that feeling oh too well. You know, I didn't grow up thinking I was gonna be a rapper because that seemed as outlandish as playing, you know, playing in the NBA to some extent, you know what I mean? After high school, David moved out to Richmond, Virginia, where he attended the E. Claiborne Robbins School of Business at the University of Richmond. According to his album cover for Professional Rapper, he studied abroad at the University of Melbourne in 2008, specialized in marketing, and graduated summa cum laude with a 3.93 GPA. Smart guy. After graduating, he moved to San Francisco and worked in an advertising industry as an account manager. Now working a stable job at the ad agency Goodby Silverstein, David's creative side started to bleed into his work. He started to present his monthly progress reports in the form of rap videos. His bosses decided to transfer him into the creative department, where he wrote copy for ads like NBA's Big Campaign. Working as a creative in the ad world may have been a step closer to the kind of work David really had a passion for, but it didn't satisfy him. And working in the ad agency just simply showed me how possible it was to create content very easily and cheaply. We had an in-house production wing at my agency. He had dreams of writing, movies, and TV shows, and becoming an actor. He thought he might be able to become a comedian, and decided the best route to this would be through funny rap songs. Basically, he wanted to be the new Will Smith, aka the greatest human being alive. Yeah, I said it. But there was a bit of a problem. In order to make it, David knew he would have to use the power of the internet. His parents and girlfriend at the time, Molly, pleaded with him not to post anything online, as it could affect his future prospects in the business world. He believes that since he put his music out there, he has eliminated 80% of the job prospects he would otherwise be qualified for, and lost out on love with Molly because, well, the two broke up. Nevertheless, David began working on his debut mixtape, So Hard, and decided to use the name Little Dicky. Why did he pick that name? I think soft, like I don't know what the definition of a micropenis is, but like right now if I showed you my soft dick. 
It's like one inch. You don't have to. Don't, don't feel obligated you. to. The complete 17 track piece would drop as a digital download on May 22nd, 2013, featuring a pretty impressive lineup of producers, including Calvin Harris and Kanye West. How he managed to line up stars like that remains a mystery. At this point, I'm at a point where my managers can reach out to anybody's managers. There's no, there's no artist that we can at least get in front of in terms of speaking to their management. Prior to launching his mixtape, Little Dicky started to release his songs on YouTube, beginning with the track Jewish Flow on April 23rd, 2013. As he released songs from his mixtape on YouTube, he also began dropping music videos sometimes for songs that didn't even appear on the mixtape, like the song Lion King, produced by Mazic Beats. That video has gone on to accumulate nearly 20 million views on YouTube, but it would pale in comparison to the music video for Ex-Boyfriend, which received over a million views in under 24 hours, and has gone on to get over 36 million views at the time of this recording. While Lil Dicky started doing the rap thing to garner attention as a comedian, and still had plans of working in TV and movies, he was surprised to find out that he's actually pretty lit. After blowing through his life savings, producing 32 songs and 15 music videos, Lil Dicky had garnered a large following of dickheads, but not much money. And, and by the way, that's, that's the name of his fan base, not... No, never mind. So on November 20th, 2013, Dickie began a month long crowdfunding effort so that he could create his debut album, new music videos, and a tour. His goal was to raise $70,000, but he ended up beating that target, raising 113,000. He went on the road for the first time with his professional rapper tour in 2014, and his debut studio album would finally arrive on July 31st, 2015, and quickly climbed to number seven on the US Billboard 200. 16 songs, four interludes. It's an hour and a half, it's a journey. I suggest you like really be in a state of mind to go on this journey before listening to it, but. The music video for his title track, Professional Rapper, would receive more than 81 million views on YouTube. His next video would bring in even bigger numbers. At the time of this recording, Save That Money featuring Fetty Wap and Rich Homie Kwan has well over 117 million views. A rap game, man. Sometimes you just gotta get on the back of a, a chopper and just go hard. In 2016, Lil Dicky collaborated with Trinidad James and Mystical on the track Just A Little Thick, She Juicy. They also appeared together in a Funny or Die video called Watch Yourself. Dicky worked with Kent Jones, Ty Dolla Sign, and E-40 for Sit Down. 2016 would also be the year he made it onto the Double XL freshman class. His pitch for Double XL, released on March 29th, addressed the fact that he had attempted but failed to make the cut the previous year. 2015, you know, I think I might not have deserved it yet. Like, I think I was probably a little bit underqualified. Like, if it did work out in 2015, I would have felt like it was a stretch and I really overachieved. Lil Dicky was a controversial choice for the freshman class list. He was not only an upper middle class white boy, he also had priorities outside of hip hop. Needless to say, some in the hip hop community were not ready to embrace him. This whole comedy rap thing, I'm not with it, I'm not for it, I'm cool right now. I don't need another better. Jewish yeah. funny dude. <laughs> And, and hip hop making fun of rap, Georgia. we got one. But still, Lil Dicky made the list in 2016 and demonstrated his incredible skills in his freestyle. It was fire. And he seemed to win designer and Anderson Pack over in the freshman cipher. To be honest, I. I don't even know why Designer was there. Making it onto the XXL freshman class was a clear indication for Lil Dicky that he had really begun to make it as a rapper. Now, one thing I don't know about his come up is whether or not he read up on hip hop and the music industry to figure out what moves to make, but he seems like the kind of guy who would. In June of 2016, Lil Dicky would drop the music video for Molly featuring Brandon Urie, which would go on to receive over 46 million views at the time of this recording. In April of 2017, Lil Dicky would appear in a special video by ESPN revealing some previously unknown facts about his family background. If you know anything about college basketball, then you probably know about the Ball family. But did you know there's a fourth ball? The Dickey Ball, University of Richmond. The same month, Lil Dicky released his most sophisticated music video yet for the song Pillow Talking, which currently ranks as the 49th most expensive music video ever made. The music video received over 21 million views in its first 12 months. It was so successful that Lil Dicky decided to create an entire EP as Brain, called I Brain. He would also release a Brain plush toy, which you can actually buy on his website. 
Well, at least you used to be able to. It's completely sold out. His next big single would be Freaky Friday featuring Chris Brown. The music video dropped on YouTube on March 15, 2018, and has since gone on to rank up nearly 488 million views at the time of this recording. And the rest of the story? Well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. This is Before They Were Famous. My name is Marlon Palmer. Thanks for watching. Two more videos right here. Give them a watch and let me know who's next in the comments down below or on Instagram or Twitter at ThatDudeMcFly. And I'll see you in another video.